Rub up your engines! Well, last year, vehicle sales in the U.S. 2022 were the worst in a decade. They sold less cars than they have in 10 years. Now, of course, they're blaming it on rising cost of parts. Hey, let's face the facts. They're overpriced. The average new car this day is like $49 thousand dollars. Not that many people got $49,000 to throw for a car. I'll give you a perfect example. A guy brought me here in Clarksville, Tennessee, a brand new Toyota Corolla hybrid that he paid 23 grand for. But he didn't buy it in Nashville because they wanted 33. He went to Colorado, found a better deal, went skiing, bought it for 23 and brought it back here. So he got a car for 23 grand. Now you don't have to fall for whatever ridiculous prices they're asking. Yeah, they sold less cars than ever in 10 years, right? Well, guess what? They made record profits too because they jacked up the prices. So, you know what I say? Price around like he did. Don't accept the crap. The guys here in Nashville said, well, you know, that's the best deal we can give you is 33 grand for that Toyota. You got it for 23 in Colorado. Look around. If they're ripping you off in your area, do like he did. Go to another area. Dealers are independently owned and operated. Now, of course, all the car manufacturers, they had the worst one in years. Other than GM, which actually sold a little bit more. They say, oh, are we, it's going to rebound. They always say that, right? Now, as far as I'm concerned, the only way it's going to rebound is if they lower their stinking prices. Look at Tesla. He just dumped the price of some of his cars 13 grand for one car. Model Y, 13 grand cheaper, right? It's going to be kind of a little change the next year, I predict, where they're not going to be getting these ridiculous prices for cars, new and used. Don't accept it. The problem with these companies are, if you accept what they're charging, they will continue to charge it. It's profit for them, right? But if you don't buy their stinking cars, guess what? They have to lower the prices or they're stuck with them. Take a dealership. They don't own the cars on the lot. They're paying for them every month like you. They're making monthly payments. If they got to sit on them, ha, they're going to have to lower their price to sell the stupid things or they'll be paying the monthly payments till hell freezes over you know so hey use your head they want too much don't buy wait it's a game right play the game against them they're not going to wait forever they'll start lowering prices if they don't sell them why why me says scotty you get so many questions about changing tranny oil why should it be a concern okay here's the thing transmission fluid is very thin fluid and it has to flow really well because the pressure in the fluid going through your transmission very soul solenoids and valves makes it shift and run correctly. All fluids get dirty over time. The dirt is friction. It will wear your transmission out. Now, the problem is you need to change it regularly. When you change the fluid on a modern transmission, you only get anywhere from 15 to 30 percent of the fluid out. The rest is stuck in a torque converter and the bodies of the vehicle. So you're only changing a small amount. You do it every 40,000, 50,000 miles. Hey, you know, it keeps it clean and it works. But if you got a car that's got 140,000 that's never been changed, if you put new fluid in, sometimes it will make it slip because the new fluid is much slipperier and the transmission is used to the old stuff. You change it regularly or you don't change it at all. I've seen so many people change an old car and they say, I changed my fluid. Now the car won't move or it shifts bad because it was used to the old fluid. In that case, you're better just leaving it and seeing how long it'll last because if you do change it, that may finish it off. Jeff Connor says, I got a 15 Camry with a plastic hood protector, dirt spots that won't come off. Is there a fix? You can try some gooby gone to see if you can get it off. Now, if you can't get it off without destroying the paint and everything, what you want to do is get plastic polishing kit. They make plastic polishing kits and they generally have three polishes. And you get a drill bit with a little polisher and polishing. You probably get it looking really good. Plastic polishes up pretty good. You could try that if you can't get it off. Gooby Gone will often take it off, but sometimes it won't if it's really stuck on there and it can't get under the plastic. So then in that case, try a polishing kit. I've used them and they work pretty good. Quadrajet said, what could be the cause of a small engine oil leak on the back of a 2016 Chevy 3.6? It's only got 15,000 miles. Should I do anything at all? Well, if it's not reaching the ground, I really wouldn't worry about it. But you only got 15,000 miles. That show you what crap that Chevy's building their stuff that that small amount of miles is leaking oil. If you really want to see what's leaking, watch my video, Finding the Source of Oil Leak, Scotty. All you got to do is put some ultraviolet leak dye in the engine oil, drive it around a little. Then you'll see the green or yellow dye, whatever color it is, will be coming out exactly where the oil leak is. And then you can go from there. Could be a valve cover gasket. Could be lots of things. But the oil UV leak dye will always find a leak. You can get a whole kit 
Places like AutoZone sell the kits for like 38 bucks or something there. Simple to use. Rudy Getz says, what are some warning signs that a Honda 2017 Accord CV is starting to wear out? If it starts to slip, you step on the gas and your tack revs up, but it doesn't go, it's slipping and that's wearing out. You're driving and it shifts and it clunks, then it's starting to wear out inside. And uh, if it does, it's a 2017 Accord CVT. You will crap in your pants when you find out how much money it costs to rebuild one of those things. They are extremely complex machines machines, very, very expensive to rebuild, and there's very few people that know how to rebuild them. You always want to baby those, and since it's a CVT, my advice, Hondas are so easy to change. Change the fluid every 30,000 miles. Put new stuff back in, whatever comes out, put that back in, and it'll make it last as long as possible. Jason Witt says, I bought a brand new car, but I want to do my own oil changes. However, I heard this can interfere with your warranty. Is it true? You know, scumbags like Mercedes, BMWs, they try to pull that, but they can't. There is a law called the Moss Magnuson Warranty Act, and the United States that as long as you have your car maintained, it really doesn't matter who is maintaining it. Keep receipts of the oil and the filter when you buy it and change it so you'll show that it has been changed. They used to try to pull this crap years ago. They'd even say, well, you didn't use an original Toyota oil filter, so your warranty's valid. That's BS. That's part of the Moss Magnuson Warranty Act. They told the manufacturers, well, if you say they got to use those parts, then you got to give them the parts free. If you say that's the only parts you can use, so then they'll okay, you can use aftermarket parts. So, no, that's a myth, but they'll always try to weed a lot of warranty claims regardless. Most of the dealerships are scumbags. You take something in, they find something, you should, oh no, this is why it broke. There's no warranty. It doesn't matter what it is. My son, the Toyota dealer, the seat broke, and he said, oh, the kid's toy's gotten away. It broke it, so now you got to spend $900 to put another seat in. You can't trust those people as far as you can throw them with warranties anyway. Alfonso Tarant says, what do you think of using Rotella T6 540 oil in a 214,000 mile 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 liter. Okay, normally I'm not a fan in the modern cars of putting a heavier weight oil in because it's wearing out, but yours is an exception. You got an 03 Jeep 4.0. That is the straight six cylinder engine. Strangely enough, I got one in the driveway. The guy just brought it over. It's a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee 4 liter. What an ironic world, right? And this has got 208,000. It still runs okay. And if it's burning a little oil, you could go a little heavier like that, and Rotella is excellent oil. Now, let's say it's not burning oil and it's running fine, I'd stick to the factory oil it suggested. But if it's starting to use a little oil, yeah, you could do that in that engine because that's a simple engine. 4 Jane 20 says, are the Porsche 964 is any good, Scotty? Well, if you have that kind of money, I guess you don't care about wasting money on car repairs, buying an extremely expensive car, right? You know, they are fun to drive, you know, there's no arguing that. I would never spend that kind of a money on a car. And truthfully, I'd never buy a used one. I always buy used cars, but those things cost so much money to repair. And if you buy them used, generally the previous owners beat the heck out of them. But if you have the money to buy one of those things and you're thinking about buying one, hey, it's your choice. Just realize you better have a lot of money to repair it as time goes on. I mean, they're fast. They're fascinating technology, you know. I mean, the Germans were always into fascinating technology, but in the long run, you know, when they break down, they cost a fortune to fix, and they do break down with grim regularity. They're not like they're going to go hundreds of thousands of miles like a Toyota or a Honda. They're fancy exotic cars and they have fancy exotic repair bills and they break down a lot faster than Toyotas and Hondas do. Jocko Bell 06 says, I got a Ford Escape. Both brake lights work, but only one tail light works. I changed the bulb. That didn't fix it. I looked at the fuses. What could it be? Generally, it means that on the one tail light that doesn't work, the ground wire for that isn't working. You have to have power and ground, positive electricity and negative electricity. So either the ground wire to the tail light is gone or take the assembly apart, look inside. You might see the socket for the tail light because the tail light's different than the brake light. The socket might be all corroded. It is what? A 12 year old Ford could be waters intruded and now it's all corroded away. You can get some wire steel brush, you have to take the fuses off, brush it off and clean it off or if it's really corroded, put another socket in. Either the socket or the ground's going on it. That's the common thing. Joey says, I got an Iridium spark plugs for a Honda Civic 02. I was going to change it, but I never got a spark plug gap tool. What should I do? Okay, well, 
Ha ha! Here's the thing. Iridium spark plugs are not made to be regapped. You buy them, they have to be the right gap. Get them the right ones for your car and put them in. They are not made to be gapped. They are not gappable spark plugs. They're set. They're real thin little wires. You could probably bend them if you tried gapping them. You buy the one for your car and put it in. If it's not the right gap, they gave you the wrong one, you need to get a different plug. You do not regap iridium spark plugs. They're not made to be regapped. This iridium is very precious metal, right? And it doesn't corrode. So it lasts almost forever. I've seen them last 200,000 miles. You can't touch them because they're thin and they will bend. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.